It's just before there was nobody to follow, and when the startups there was no were public, they didn't do well. Yeah. yeah. Umesh, you started in India, grew a company now, which is a global company. Um, what's changed for you on the ground there? You know, Sumant, when I started my career mid to early through 2000s, my first company, 2007, eight, second company, that was the era that John just mentioned. India used to be the slow follower. 20 years ago when leaders like John and others from US discovered India as the back office of the world. Yeah, it's a resource. A resource. India always has had this asset of creating, you know, 500, 600,000 new engineers every year, IITs and other universities. So first India became the services back office for the world, developing technology, but uh, now today, fast forward, it's the world capital of uh, what's called the GCC, yeah. the Global Capability Center. Then around 2000, 8, 2010, when I was founding the company, that was a decade after Salesforce was founded. Yeah. And we had Zoho and Freshworks and a lot of other important SaaS companies emerge from India. And once again, we saw that fast, that slow following nature where once you had role models, we could replicate thousands of SaaS companies coming out of Bangalore and Chennai, which have taken on verticals and important areas of the world. Today, we are seeing in AI a desire across the board in India that I interact with government, with businesses and startups, that India does not want to be a slow follower anymore. And that's truly significant for the whole world at this point, because we're going to need millions of AI jobs in the next three to five years. And if you think about where is that workforce going to come from? So if you read Prime Minister Modi's messages, we, we had a conference in India last year, which was called the Global Partnership for AI, where he announced to the world India's intention to lead AI being a responsible, ethical country. Welcome to the future.